Hi, and welcome to your fourth Xcode programming tutorial. And today we're looking at a fundamental part of programming iOS applications, which is controlling the properties of UI elements. So what does this mean? Well, if you open up an app on your phone, you'll notice that there's various UI elements. There's buttons, there's labels, there's segmenting controls, there's tab bars, and there's much more. But they've all got properties. Color, text, are they hidden, are they showing, are they enabled or are they disabled? These are all properties of those various UI elements. But there is a way to control these, and it's fairly simple. What you do is you declare an IB outlet for that particular UI element, and then you control the outlet. And an outlet's pretty much a variable used to control a UI element. So, without me keeping on explaining, let's actually get started on creating this project. So, open up Xcode, and create a new Xcode project. <clears throat> We're just going to create a single view application, and I'm just going to call it IB Outlet. You can call yours whatever you like. I'm using storyboards, and make sure you're using Arc and Unit Tests. So create this project in whatever directory you want, and then go into your main storyboard dot storyboard, and this is where we're going to begin. I'm going to start by dragging up my file template library so I can see it more easily, and I can do this just by hovering over the line and dragging, as you would in any other application. Now I can see all the UI elements iOS has to offer. So don't worry about these first block of elements, we're not going to use any of those, because they are view controllers, or tab bar controllers. They're the whole screen. Then there's gesture recognizers, and again, we're not going to worry about these, because that's for detecting gestures, rather than an element you can actually see on the screen. For that reason, if you hover over them and you get some details, you'll see that they are things such as pinch gestures, multi-touch gestures, and so on. We're going to show and hide a button. So let's drag on that button, and then we're going to hide, um, sorry, we're going to enable and disable a button. And then we're going to have a button to do all of this, or to reshow and re-enable all of them. So let's call the bottom button reset, and the top button will be called hide, and this is the button that when we click on it, it will hide and the disable button, which when we click on it, it will disable that button. Don't worry about making your view look too nice for the moment. After all, this is a very basic application. Now go into your assistant editor by clicking on the tab up the top right. We go through this every tutorial, so if you haven't seen them all, I suggest you do now. I'm just going to make my Xcode window slightly bigger. Now we need to create an IB outlet. To do this, after this at interface line, we need to add a curly opening bracket. Then press enter, and Xcode will add the closing one for you. If it doesn't, add it in yourself. Now, in case you're not seeing the same screen as I am, make sure that you have up here in the top left of the second panel set to automatic, and it is set to viewcontroller.h. Because we want to add these UI elements into our viewcontroller because this is a class of the UI view controller. Uh, I've gone through this in our previous tutorial, Xcode Tutorial 3, Changing Screens. So I suggest you watch that if you didn't understand what I just meant. So now we need to hook up our IB outlet. Let's begin with the hide. Drag it and drop it inside the curly brackets. We want to make sure the connection is set to be outlet, not outlet collect collection or an action, and if you do see action appear in this menu, make sure that you've dragged inside the curly brackets. Then we need to give the outlet a name. I'm going to call it hide button, in camel case. Storage, I'm going to set to be strong. By default it will be weak, so do change it to strong. It doesn't really matter what this means at this stage. You'll notice that Xcode's automatically detected that this is a UI button that we're trying to control and automatically added in UI button as the type, so don't change that either. Click connect, and you'll see an IB outlet will be appear in your viewcontroller.h. If we go to our viewcontroller.m, you'll see that if we had a view did unload method, it would also release this if we weren't using arc. Again, don't worry about that. what that means, that's for more for advanced programmers. So now we need to do the same for the disable button, by dragging and then dropping in the viewcontroller.h. 
and we'll call this disable button. So now we have our two outlets and all we need to do is hook up an action for when we click on reset. And we need to make sure that we don't, when we drag it under the curly brackets for the action for the reset button, we need to make sure we've set the connection to be an action. And we'll call it reset. And touch up inside and the argument sender type ID. So connect that up. And then we also need two more actions. One for when we click on the high button and one for when we click on the disable button. So do as you did with the reset button except change the name to hide and disable. Now, what you've noticed there is I've accidentally set it to be an IB outlet instead of an action. And you'll notice it appears very differently to when, than when I put the IB outlet within the curly brackets. When this happens, there are two things you need to do. One, you need to delete this line of code. Then you need to go into your view controller.m and make sure that there's no reference of it there. If there is, you'll get a warning anyway. Then you need to go into your storyboard, right click on view controller, and delete the one where there is a warning. This just means that there is no outlet that exists called disable. And that's because we just deleted it. So now we can then go and hook up the action. So that's merely if you make an error. And it does happen, and it's not uncommon, because by default, the connection is set to outlet even after the curly brackets, and usually you don't want to declare an outlet in that area. So we've created our three methods. Let's now go into our viewcontroller.m, and I'm going to go back to the single view editor. So if, let's first hook up the hide method. All we need to do is get the name of our button, which we called hide button, and then type dot hidden equals yes. The reason we do dot and then hidden is because Objective-C, which is this programming language that we are currently using, is derived from C, C++, C Sharp, and a few other languages. And this is something we get from C Sharp. So essentially what we're saying is find the hide button, check, and then go the hide button's property of hidden equals yes. Yes, we do want to hide the hide button. Then in disable, we do a similar thing, except we type disable button dot enabled equals no. If we wanted to disable the hide button, we could just type hide button dot enabled equals no. And then to re-enable it, we type hide disable button dot enabled equals yes, because we do want to enable it. And the same for hide, except we don't want to hide it, so we type no. There's no such thing as disable button dot disabled. Instead, you do disable button dot enabled equals no. Then we need to hook up the reset button, and the reset button is pretty much going to reverse everything we just did. So hide button dot hidden equals no. We want it to be visible, and disable button dot enabled equals yes. Let's zoom out and run our application and see if it all works. So hit run and wait for the iOS simulator to load up. Hopefully you're not getting any errors, and if you do, go to your viewcontroller.h. That's most likely where it will be occurring. You can see on the screen are three buttons. Let's start by clicking on the disable button. As you'll see, when I click on it, it goes blue as I'm interacting with it. If I now let go and try clicking, nothing happens. It's been disabled. It's still visible, but the user can't do anything with it. And if I had an action hooked up, which I do, but a different action, you notice nothing will happen when I click on it. Let's click reset, and now I can use it again, as per normal, until I click it again, when it disables. So let's reset and try the hide button. If I click on it, hopefully what should happen is the hide button will go completely invisible and be useless. And as you can see, that's exactly what happens. So let's click reset. So that's how you hide and show objects in iOS. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and if you've got any questions about using IB outlets, Send us a message or visit 99centsappdevelopment.com and get in touch with us on there. Be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time for another iOS programming tutorial.